pretty clear that somebody smuggled his little ass the fuck out of there during Order 66. Thank God he wasn't around during Order 69. 69, dudes! <gasps> Execute Order 69. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. In this video, I'm gonna give you five super important art tips, as well as talking about The Mandalorian and Ahsoka Tano, so don't go anywhere. Okay, let's get right to it. First things first, tip number one, choosing your pose. In today's video, I'm gonna be mixing it up some. Normally, you know, in my previous videos, I've done lots of comic book art style, classic dynamic poses. You can check those out here. However, in this video, we're gonna be mixing it up, I'm stepping a little bit outside my comfort zone. I'm doing a pretty, pretty tame pose. The pose that I'm doing is going to specifically relate to the background that I'm doing. And because of that, that's inherently the reason why I'm not using a dynamic pose or even a particular crazy, crazy perspective like I normally do because for what I'm trying to go for in this image, I don't need it, or I've decided that I don't need it. That's why this pose, that's why this pose can be more relaxed. What you're watching me do here in the thumbnails is figure out one, what I'm trying to tell the audience, and two, how I'm going to go about doing that. So I'm, I'm figuring out, do I want something in your face like I normally do, or do I want something more subdued? Spoiler alert. I end up going for the latter instead of the former. I want something more tame. I want something more subdued, hence why I chose this one in the upper left. Tip number two, choosing your style. And this is specifically for artists out there who have various different styles. I know most artists and illustrators I know have at least a few in their back pocket. I, in this piece, am going to venture more towards concept art, that genre, that more painterly style. And there's a very, very, very specific reason for me doing this. And I'm gonna talk about that in the next step. But if you are one of the illustrators out there who do have varying styles, maybe you have photorealism or more cartoony style, and you can kind of pick and choose, figuring out what that's going to be before you jump in, it'll be essential. Okay, so by now, you should have an idea of what you're trying to tell the audience member. So tip number three, using emotion. Choosing that emotion, maybe this should have been tip number one, but write these down. Keep these in mind for the next time you draw. That emotion that you're trying to convey, and it could be anything on the wide array of emotions, silliness, aggression, whatever, that should dictate the previous two aforementioned tips. Your pose, or the, rather the pose you set your character in. The setting, therefore, the stylization that you're going to implement in this drawing. You see how it all ties together, but I would say at the heart of it is the emotion of the piece. And as you can see, if you look behind me, I'm already setting a tone, right? You could already kind of feel the tone of the piece. Hence, tip number three. <clears throat> tip number four, telling a story. Now that you figured out the emotion that you're going for and the pose and the line work that you're going to utilize all to help convey this emotion, Guess what? You're trying to tell a story here. You want your audience to figure out what's going on. This is, in essence, a singular frame in the movie that you're trying to tell, right? You've got one image to lay out everything. The environment, the pose, the uh, character, the character design. All of this is in service of storytelling. In this one singular image, ideally, the person viewing it should be able to piece together to a certain degree what's happening, what has happened before this image, what's happening during, what is happening during this image, and what is going to immediately follow this image. And if you really want to bring that on home, you're going to need to know one thing, and that's tip number five, knowing your character. This one, well, I mean, they're all really important, but God damn, this one is really, really fucking important. Who are you telling the audience this person is? If they have no idea, if they're not a fan of Star Wars, if they're not a fan of whatever, whatever it is that you're drawing, how do they know who this person is? All they will know is what you're giving them. You have to do your best to convey this character. 
Now, when it comes to Ahsoka here specifically, I know she isn't a Jedi, but she was trained by Jedi's and she can't help but carry her, herself in the same light, in the same way that we've seen Obi-Wan, in the same way that we've seen Luke once they achieve a certain level of mastery of the Force. There is a confident stillness in them that in certain times can be more uh, threatening, more ominous than the biggest mech, the biggest guns, you know, seeing a Jedi uh, standing there like a Ronin, it is intimidating as all hell. And that's really, that's really the point that I'm trying to drive home here. Okay, in this next part of the video, we're gonna be talking about Ahsoka, the Mandalorian, Sweet Baby Back Yoda, AKA LeGrogu, and make sure to hit the subscribe button because I'm gonna be dropping more art tip videos on the channel as well as live streams throughout the week. Okay, hey, hey, between you and me, can you keep a secret? I haven't finished watching Clone Wars yet. I know, dude, it's blasphemy. I'm drawing Ahsoka. Uh, I have not finished the series. I haven't watched uh, Rebels yet either. I know, what am I doing, right? How dare I even make this video? So let me let me be honest. Uh, <laughs> I did a little research. I spoiled the series for me in order to... I had to ask, man. I saw those fucking crazy cool lightsabers that are white and i said what the hell is this how do i know not how do i not know what this is so i went to google and i spoiled a whole bunch of shit for me so let this be fair warning to you out there who don't know what the history of the lightsabers are or ahsoka's deal i'm gonna be spoiling a whole bunch of her backstory here because i gotta talk about it i gotta talk about it. all right uh so well you've been warned okay so it goes like this in between in between the Clone Wars and the Rebels series, she leaves and comes back and then she shows up with these two dual white lightsabers. And it goes, she went out, she was hunted by an Inquisitor or something along those lines. They fought one on one. She was unarmed. She had no lightsaber. She managed to best him, take his dual wielding, fucking, you know, reddish shit, badass Sith blade and restore it. I did not know this, but apparently when the Sith are making their lightsabers, they take the kyber crystal that exists in all lightsabers and they corrupt it. That's what gives it that red color. Now, if you're able to heal that corruption like Ahsoka did, it goes from wet, from red, red. <laughs> it goes from red to white. Isn't that fucking awesome, right? Isn't that fucking cool? Okay, so going into this episode, I had no idea who Ahsoka was. I mean, obviously I knew of her. I've been watching a little bit of the Clone Wars, but not near, not nearly enough to be that acquainted with her aside from, oh yeah, she was Anakin Skywalker's had one before he turned to the dark side. Well, big whoop. Until this episode, holy crap, man. Her introduction was so badass. She rolls out into the forest, fights these soldiers, 1v like six or something proceeds to absolutely just run through these dudes. It's very badass, like a samurai kind of Ronin vibes or like a Lone Ranger type, just kicking all kinds of butt. Walks up to the perimeter of this fortified city, faces down all these men who are pointing their guns at her. And when the, uh, you know, the mayor of the city, whatever her name is, the magistrate, whatever, is like, hey, uh, listen, I'm gonna start killing civilians unless you uh, quit your shit, <laughs> you know, submit to me, whatever. And Ahsoka's like, yeah, uh, go f yourself. I see your ultimatum and I give you an ultimatum in return. You have 24 hours before I come in there and I just start, you know, <laughs> slicing and dicing and then walks off. God, what a badass. What an absolute badass. At that point, I was like, yep, I'm drawing this woman. I'm drawing her right now. I want to talk a little bit more about the episode. Firstly, the big info dump origin story that was Baby Yoda's backstory, a.k.a. Baby Yoda, a.k.a. Grogu. I'm still on the fence about that name. Fucking Grogu. All right, it's cool. I'm still gonna call him Baby Yoda, but you know, whatever. Dude, what? He was on Coruscant? Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Coruscant, it was the capital city of the, you know, Republic and then the Galactic Empire. So it's the motherfucking city. It's where the Jedi Order was. It's where, you know, the Jedi had, you know, work operated out of for, I don't know, a thousand years or whatever. But None of that matters because Baby Yoda was there during the time of Anakin, during the time of Obi-Wan, during the time of Qui-Gon and Yoda. He actually probably, she alludes to him training with all kinds of Jedi Masters, so there's a very high likelihood that he did in fact train with Master Yoda, which is mind-blowing, absolutely insane. Also, 
very clear that somebody smuggled his little ass the fuck out of there during Order 66. Thank God he wasn't around during Order 69. 69, dudes! <gasps> Execute Order 69. Okay, so my biggest question is, who snuck him out? For real. I mean, your first guess has to be Obi-Wan. But even then, there is something like a 30-ish year gap between him, well, it's essentially the entire reign of the Galactic Empire. In that time frame, where has he been? Very, very, very curious to know. Also, there is a moment where Ahsoka, well, she refuses to teach Baby Yoda or Grogu. And the reason is because she states that Grogu is just grown, he's grown too attached to Mandalorian. He considers him a father. And well, when the Jedi are that emotional and she alludes to it corrupting the best of them, you know, she, yeah, we all know who she's talking about. Now this is a long shot, but do you guys remember when they were testing baby Yoda's abilities and Yoda had a force grab a little toy out of Mando's hands and baby Yoda's being stubborn. So Ahsoka's like, uh, try connecting with him. And there's like a brief moment, there's a brief pause between the two of them where there seems to be a connection, a non-verbal connection. The nerd, the nerd in me is thinking, maybe, maybe that was a little bit of a forced connection? I don't know, just a thought. Could be, I could be off. Either way, super excited to see where this goes because guess what? They're going to another ancient Jedi temple and they're going to essentially put out a beacon to see who's going to help Baby Yoda become a Jedi or not. And I wonder if Mando maybe might be a little force sensitive too? I don't know. This is super exciting. I can't wait. I hope Ahsoka gets her own show. I hope she meets up with Bo-Katan and I can't wait to see who else might pop up. Uh, let me know what you guys think below. Do you think we're going to be seeing any more weird cameos? Perhaps? In flashbacks even? Maybe? Big, big, big thank you to everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon, everybody who's been liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I see and answer all of your comments. You know what? Actually, this week, if you guys have an idea of who I should be drawing in the next few videos, please don't be afraid to chime in. Let me know. Also, uh, everybody who's been checking out my links in the description. Oh, and dudes, I am now streaming here live on YouTube four days a week, so make sure to come by, check me out, hit up a stream, come by, say hi, and until then, I'll see you in the next video.